Good morning, my darlings. Welcome to a new vlog. I think this is going to be quite a nice, relaxed, calm vlog. It is the weekend and it's absolutely glorious. I've started off today with a really relaxing 20 minute um, yoga flow, maybe 25 minutes, just following a Peloton routine, which was great. It's a little bit chilly in here today, so I've got the Dyson fan <laughs> giving me a little bit of warmth. And I've popped on my thickest <laughs> yoga outfit. These leggings are, well, it's actually a matching set from Lululemon. Can't remember where the knit is from. But yeah, lovely way to start the day. Charlie was in here stretching with me too. Now, I think today I'm going to be doing... <laughs> I laugh because my last few attempts have been awful, but I am going to try another pumpkin themed bake. I also want to make a vegetable broth and maybe even a pumpkin pasta. <laughs> Lots on the agenda. But first I'm going to hop in the shower and then I might just do a little bit of dahlia picking because we might actually have a frost tomorrow evening and frosts mean the end of dahlias, which is truly heartbreaking. So we need to make the most of it while we still can. Okay, my darlings, I'm freshly out of the shower. I just did a body shower and I was thinking, do boys have body showers or is it just us girls and we don't wanna wash our hair? Who knows? Oat milk coffee on the go. I've started to try <laughs> to see if I can wait until after my morning workout to have my coffee and wake up naturally and I think it helps my energy levels through the day. So I did yoga this morning because my muscles have been a little bit sore from, I think it's a mixture between doing more, it's hard because I can't film our former Pilates classes, but we do a lot of chest exercises like chest opening and I don't think I've ever really worked my chest that much. And also I've started a bit of a new routine when it comes to weightlifting, which um, I'll share with you soon actually because it's a new app that I've been using. And it's basically a personal trainer that you're connected with. And then, in fact, I'll just show you, it's absolutely amazing. You get connected with a personal trainer. It's called Copilot. This is basically why I bought the Apple Watch. Um, and you can chat with your personal trainer, like she's literally just sent me <laughs> an update on my form. This is from the workout that I did the other day. You can see what your workout is for the day and she designs it all for you. So this is the next workout that I'll be doing, the equipment that I'll need. It, it's really amazing. And for me, it's great because obviously Simon sadly moved to Germany, sadly for us, great for him. And I needed a kick up the butt to keep doing weight. But anyway, the reason why I'm talking about that is because um, when I have got achy muscles, this is something that Charlie and I both use. And if anyone else gets sore, glutes or sore legs. I think especially during rugby season, everything for Charlie is sore. But for me, I really notice when I switch up my workout routine, certain muscle groups can get a little bit sore. And as much as a bath goes quite a long way to solve these things, this is just like next level. Charlie gets physio from um, a very professional physiotherapist and he actually does a lot of professional rugby players and he was saying that these are just amazing for speeding up muscle recovery. I'm sure some of you might have seen something like this before, especially if you are a gym goer or your other half is a gym goer. So this is my <laughs> aero gun. It looks like, looks like a speeding camera. <laughs> if anyone speeds through our village, I could just stand there like this and they will slow down thinking that I'm going to capture them. But basically this has got like a little contraption here that, in fact, I'll just show you. I popped my pajama bottoms on to do this because you can do it with their legs. 
but I, <laughs> I don't. I would normally do it in my leggings, but I've already had my shower. So you can, basically this stimulates the muscles and when a muscle is stimulated it goes into repair mode and um, helps with recovery. So you can actually awaken your muscles, you can do a warm up with this by gliding it over a muscle area for like 20 seconds and then after a workout I would recommend a little bit more, maybe 30 seconds per muscle group and you literally just glide it up and down. And it's like a quite intense massage but it really helps with recovery really helps with muscle soreness so let me show you how it works i'm going to turn it on you'll notice how can you see it's like like a drill it's very quiet i've seen devices like this before and they are just so loud you couldn't possibly have a conversation so for a physio to have something like this is amazing there are different settings i would recommend if you're doing it for a warm-up or for the first time then just use the really light setting obviously it's not ideal doing it over my dressing gown but just to give you an example on my chest muscles this is one of one two three four five six five or six different attachments and you just like oh my god so good oh my god sorry this is just heaven oh my god just turn that off a sec it feels like oh <laughs> that side already feels so much better than that side and that was just five seconds it's got something very jazzy called air cushion technology within it which basically means that it adapts to the area of the body that you're doing it on so here there's not much fat there's it's probably the, one of the thinnest muscles in the body on the chest area so that was quite gentle but if i did it here on my shoulders that is a heavenly one if you are at your desk all day like hunched over on your keyboard and you really feel like these muscles are quite sore then this is just bliss it's like having a personal masseuse with you at all times it's really not that heavy either so you could definitely travel with it up to six hours or eight hours oh battery life so a few of the different heads that come in the box this one is really good for areas like calves or forearms um some slightly more intense ones like this this is like a little bullet so if you really need to get deep in somewhere then that i should not use that one very satisfying this one is also really good for here it literally feels like a human hand like pummeling away at your um at your muscles it's really good for reducing tightness i love using that one here um this one's really good for the glutes. It literally massages your buttocks in the most wonderful way. And yeah, it's amazing how just 30 seconds on one particular muscle can make such a huge difference. So I'm gonna do it on my legs and <laughs> on my quads because that's what I find aches the most after a big weights workout. This combined with my yoga, I'm gonna be feeling fit as a fiddle. I think I've got a discount code for this, Josie20. I will leave that on the screen and linked down below. So yes, um, have a little look. It, oh, this would be such a good, this would be such a good Christmas gift. If you know anyone, whether it's your parents or your brother or your husband or your wife that is um, into their workouts and maybe needs a little helping hand with recovery, complains from aching muscles, obviously you can share this with however many people that you want to. You just charge it up um, and you can obviously like clean the heads. You don't really need to, especially if you do over workout clothing. So yeah, great little tool. I'm gonna do my massaging and then get myself ready for the day. deja vu this morning i'm pretty sure i wore this exact outfit um for last weekend's vlog as well or the vlog that i filmed last weekend but it's just so cozy and perfect for this time of year these trousers are like a nice very relaxed linen trouser popped on a belt and then a lily silk cashmere v-neck my hair is really fluffy and lightweight today um i almost shouldn't have washed it but Never mind. So I'm going to go downstairs. I think we're going to do a nice scrambled egg breakfast. So 
that's the plan for first thing this morning. And then a few other things that I want to create in the kitchen later today. I'd really love to do a vegetable broth. It's the base of so many lovely soups and other recipes that you can enjoy this time of year. And it should keep for about a month in the fridge. And then I'm also going to make, it's like a three step. <laughs> I have to basically make three things in order to make one thing. The end goal is to make a banana and chocolate chip bread, like a, like a banana bread. Did I say banana? I meant pumpkin. Um, yeah, it's like a banana bread, but it's pumpkin and chocolate chip, but that requires pumpkin butter. So before making the cake, I need to make the pumpkin butter, which is basically pumpkin puree with spices and sugar in. Therefore, I also need to make a pumpkin puree before I can make the butter, before I can make the bread. Quite convoluted to say the least. So first thing I'm going to do um, while Charlie makes the breakfast is prep some pumpkin so I can make my pumpkin puree. Okay my darlings, I feel like this is just deja vu because all of the last few vlogs have involved something going on here in the kitchen but I just think that at this time of year the vegetables and the produce that's so abundant is just such like cozy, warming, delicious food and I really get so inspired to make things at this time of year. As you know, with mixed <laughs> success, but I think it's just fun sharing the journey with you. So these, I think this is called a sugar pumpkin or a pie pumpkin. Um, and basically this type of pumpkin is what I find is best for roasting. I like to use a tea towel just for a little bit of extra stability. Um, I'm using two because there's lots of pumpkin puree needed for my various recipes. Charlie lets me know the rules about the knives, which knife to choose, and you always want a knife that's bigger than what you're cutting. So this is my carving knife. I literally feel like something out of a Halloween sketch. Um, so using my dishcloth to support the pumpkin, I'm going to just wiggle the knife from top to bottom to cut it in half. Obviously you don't want to try cutting through the stem because that's just too hard. And then we're gonna roast the two sides of the pumpkin. I did this last time but you want to take out all of this stringiness and the seeds pop that into a bowl and then we'll do something delicious with the seeds afterwards because they are so tasty and before you pop your pumpkin halves down on the baking tray just sprinkle with a little bit of salt Okay, so they've just been sitting for a few moments with some salt on them and I'm just popping some baking paper in here really because I don't want to do loads of washing up and anything roasting can be a bit of a pain. So now we're flipping these upside down onto the baking tray and they're going to go in the agar for about 40 minutes. It's going to be around 180 to 200 degrees just until the skin starts to shrivel up and the pumpkins have gone nice and soft. the pumpkin seeds I gave them a little rinse out in the sieve tried to get rid of as much of the flesh as possible and now I've added on some salt I'm just doing a little bit more I do like them quite salty and you can do whatever flavor you like you could do truffle you could do chili but recently I've just been loving curry pumpkin seeds I know that sounds a bit strange but just a little bit of curry powder and of course some olive oil drizzled on top and they are so tasty so again these are going to go into the agar. Sorry about the background noise. It is lawn mowing day. So they're just gonna go into the agar until they are turning slightly golden. 
These are leftover seeds that I haven't popped in the baking tray and I'm just going to dry these out and then I'm going to save them in one of my little seed packets to plant next year. What technique are we doing today for the scrambled egg dilling? <laughs> Marco Pierre White. So watch, you just puncture the egg yolks like this. And then slowly mix them in. Is the aim to not have it fully mixed? You want these sort of orangey ribbons. You've cra you've not done the best job with the eggs today. <laughs> Josie's cracked the eggs. Oh dear. That's the third piece I've found. <laughs> um, <gasps> if you yeah. want a job doing properly. <laughs> so now you yeah you want to just mix them so you get these lovely little ribbons of white and yolk rather than it all mixed. It's just a different way of having them. So now on a fairly low heat, you let that. Delightful. And then you sort of let the butter and the eggs create the creaminess. Mm. I mean, a lot of people add milk, but I would never yeah, add milk. Yeah, I was going to say. No? No. So and no. you're not and going to add nice and creamy. cheese. I'm going to sprinkle some parmesan on top at the end. Delightful. Fairly labour intensive, but satisfying. It's smelling good. <laughs> How they butter the toast. Mm. They do it aggressively, or unevenly. They're in a bad mood. They're in a bad mood. <laughs> if they do it in a nice smooth motion, right now, things are all good. <laughs> for about 30 minutes and just like last time they've puffed up like little sugar puffs which is actually wonderful it's very satisfying when you crunch into them they are incredibly moorish I've actually eaten about half of them already so I'm gonna have to put them away so I don't snuffle all of them but my goodness what a tasty little snack A gardening job to do at this time of year is sort out your bulbs because the bulb strategy. The bulb strategy. Okay, what is our bulb strategy this year, well, darling? I think we always do this where you and I sort of aren't communicating and we order different things. So we need to spread everything out that we've got. We are we've obviously discussed that we're gonna add more alliums into this border. Yep. The border by the shed has never had alliums, so they're gonna have alliums. Yeah. I think alliums, particularly purple sensation against the backdrop of green ferns yes is a really nice combination yep we're gonna put some alliums behind the water feature where we've currently got anemones and ferns they're gonna have to be really tall ones there yeah, purple sensation again. okay but to be honest allium purple sensation is by far my favorite the experimental ones i like to use at the front yeah so that on that note we've got allium red mohican which we should google but i bought that because i remember thinking it looked really cool so should we split into groups of the areas that they're going to be planted in i think let's organize everything into what they are so these are like specialist alliums because we've got the uh, i never know how to say it Cy cyrocephalon which are the like more like chive like yeah, alliums they dry out really nicely and the nice thing about different alliums is not just the fact that you have a variety but the, the, often they all flower at different times so allium purple sensation is our favorite and they dry really nicely but obviously they're all out and then they're gone so yeah. it's quite nice to have two or three other varieties yeah so that you get alliums sort of through spring and into summer the smaller ones flower mid to late summer don't they they've only just yes. finished really uh, yes you're correct these is it these ones no um are they these gone now? were those are another type they're a summer type of allium but they're not that um, oh right oh that other one dexy no 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 we won't have that thank you okay let's get cracking
we keep discovering more and more bulbs, tulips, alliums, and enemies. Seems I got 25. a little bit carried away. They must be tiny ones. We've had a real production line of productivity going on over here. So in these little bowls, I have got my anemone and my ranunculus uh, little, they look like little spiders, but you have to soak them for at least three hours before you plant them. And this is a really good time of year to do it. Just make sure that they don't get too warm, ideally in, an, in a cold frame or in an unheated greenhouse, as long as you don't get too many more sunny spells. And you just want to do these in little individual modules so that's going to be a task for me later on today and then Charlie has been leading the organization of the bulbs we've got different trays for different areas so what's this so these are purple tulips yeah so we're just sorting them by color mm -hmm. because at the front of the house we kind of well everywhere we've got like a but more than anywhere at the front of the house is very much purple and white theme yeah so we want purple and white tulips we're going to put in the border there and we were saying thinking back to this 2023 March April it's just so lovely because it's the first bit of color that you get in the garden so it's yeah. so nice to look out of our bedroom window and see the tulips in the borders it's been a real learning curve because I personally have never loved tulips and I've never really loved crocus but or you're snowdrops. so grateful for them but, aren't you uh, yeah you then really learn to appreciate them even though they're not my favorite flower that they offer color in the darkest most gloomy times of year yeah so um yeah, and you can bring them into the house and snip them and give them to friends and do beautiful displays. Well, I think the nice thing that we learned last year, we did a, we only did a handful of them. Mm. This year we want to do a lot more, is planters with lots of bowls, which is what this is for. So this is more of pinks, greens, whites and purples, but mixed tulips. Yeah. So these are more I tulips that have of lots them. of different colours. The marriage, the angelique, the ice cream. And what we, what we did last year, we'll even give you an example. Like here, we will obviously... Do, not right time to actually plant the bulbs yet because it's still too warm. Yeah. But um, we'll, we'll plant up a load of mixture of tulips here. Mm -hmm. And then a pot this size is a really nice example. You can then move this wherever, say it is a nice sunny winter's day and you're outside, or you can even bring it in the house and then have an explosion of color. So yeah. I think it allows you to move flowers and color around the garden. And we were saying for the mega displays, we've got a lot of these troughs from Nicholson's and the metal innards, yeah, yeah. we can just remove the metal inside and replace it with something else, can't well, that's we? That's the strategy. These are kind of left over from the wedding and we bought them off. Nicholson's kindly lent, lent us them and then we're like, actually, we really like them. Because <laughs> yeah. we already have the bigger ones. Mm. Um, and I know we've inspired lots of other YouTubers with these planters. Yeah. Um, but the idea, I think, next year is we'll have lavender in one of these trays. Not hydrangeas again. We, well, We've got a or, lot of lavender. Or, or hydrangeas, or yeah. whatever, something for the summer. And then you lift this out, and then we replace it with the one that has tulips and whatever in for this time of year. Just quickly, is this whole thing going to turn red? Because that is looking amazing. Look how vivid yeah. this colour is. The Trachlospernum does go more this colour. That's um, amazing. I don't remember that last year. It won't go fully. This one won't go fully. The one at the front, because it gets less sun, tends to go more purpley. That one died though, so we've replaced that. But because this gets quite a lot of sun, it does stay greener uh, than the others. Well, maybe um, not this year, because I've never noticed such you bright red. You always get a little bit of that. Really, it looks yeah. amazing, look at that. How nature can turn a juicy green leaf into something that's that color. Just amazing. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, so, and then I'll give you one more example. We're gonna try and get a couple of um, more plastic yeah. We can literally take this out of here because it's in a plastic planter. Ah. Take that out, lift it out, put that behind your greenhouse for the winter, yeah. and it'll be fine. And then. Oh, I can smell that. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah. This is a French lavender, I think. So mm. it's, French lavender, I think English lavender looks better, but French lavender smells better. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah. We need then, a slightly smaller plastic pot for the tulips because we don't want to see the plastic. Do 100%, we? Hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. So that, and then that's another example. I think this is what we're learning because particularly when you've got a pot that's near functional spaces so we see this out the kitchen mm. so even though you're not going to necessarily be in the garden as much in the winter and obviously when the, in the very early spring you'll, you'll be able to see the tulips exploding through the kitchen that is going so to be glorious and actually this was a nice place we had a planter with tulips on last year as well wasn't it we did is anyway, that rain i think it's gonna rain it was meant to be sunny all afternoon okay let's pop these away
Well, hopefully this is only going to be a five or 10 minute rainstorm. So I'm going to continue with my pumpkin puree. I'm going to use a spoon to get the soft flesh out of the pumpkin into the blender. If you want, you can add a little bit more olive oil and salt at this stage, but I'm gonna try blending it just with um, nothing else added to begin with and see how the consistency is. a wonderful homemade pumpkin puree that was very very easy definitely won't be buying store-bought again because that was so simple now to make the pumpkin butter for, for the recipe for the cake <laughs> I've realized there's something else that I need to make which is apple cider I just presumed that the recipe meant apple cider vinegar which I have it did not it meant actual apple cider Luckily, however, there is a 30 minute recipe on the Thermomix, which I can do. And I have got most of the ingredients that I need. So the main one being apple juice. I did for a moment think I was gonna have to juice some apples from the tree, but we've got some lovely red love apple juice from the Newt. Um, you do need a star anise. I don't have a star anise, but I've got cloves and cardamom. Very similar kind of taste. A cinnamon stick, perfect juice of a lemon. I've got a lime. <laughs> this is why my baking goes wrong. And also some honey, which I do have. I think this is going to be a really nice warming drink. So whatever I don't need for the pumpkin butter recipe, I can enjoy as an afternoon beverage. So I'm going to start making this. I think it's a case of popping it all into the Thermomix and yeah, seven minutes, 212 degrees, and then let it degree. Oh, Fahrenheit. Um, and then infuse for 15 minutes. So very easy. Let's do it. This mixture has now been cooking um, for about eight minutes and it says now to let it sit for a further 15 minutes to infuse and look at this the Sun has returned so I'm going to take out my little tray of bud vases that I put together earlier and see if we can put together a few little posies of blooms well I normally head straight down to the cut flower area <laughs> But these anemones are just absolutely incredible and now that everything else is starting to die back a little bit or shrink, I think they're looking maybe a little bit too prominent. So I'm going to snip a few of these beautiful honorine anemones to bring into the house to enjoy now that the temperatures are cooling down outside. I always have my little florist assistant with me. Thank you my baby. That is not bad at all for a middle of October little flower haul. I really like this mixture in this little bud vase. You've got that beautiful dahlia at the front, the pom-pom dahlia, some gorgeous verbena and some anemone. Absolutely lovely. I get these little glasses from Amazon by the way. I'll leave them linked down below. And then a mixture of very colourful dahlias in this one. Just gorgeous, very solid shaped ones pom-poms in here, white and the lovely sunset pink coloured one. This is the dinner plate, um, cafe au lait and I think these are called labyrinth. Look at the colours of that. And then this labyrinth was just a little bit too big to fit in that pot so it's gone in here. Might find a few more bits to pop in there. Now this hydrangea, 
over here dries out really beautifully. You might remember a couple of weeks ago I made a few displays out of that and some wildflower but today the wildflower turf has actually been cut down. You have to do that at this time of year just so that the um, energy for the plants can go back into the roots so it comes back next year instead of everything going to seed. But yes the hydrangea and wildflower display that I made a couple of weeks ago has all completely dried out and now looks absolutely beautiful in the living room and that should last all autumn. So I'm going to take these little bits into the house and then I might just make the most of this um, little sunny moment that we've got by doing a bit more deadheading down here. I find deadheading just so therapeutic. <laughs> I don't know what you can see because it's just a silhouette but I have bought myself a little treat. This is the chai cookie that I attempted to make in the last vlog. They just went very flat. I must have made the um, concoction a little bit too liquidy. Maybe add some more flour next time. But they do taste amazing. They just look a little bit ridiculous. And I have to say, this is like my dream day. <laughs> At home, glorious weather, in the garden, doing little pottering bits. Nothing too big, nothing too challenging. Oh, oh, it's a little fly. Okay. Um, doing some nice wholesome baking and then we don't have any plans later. We're just <laughs> gonna have an early night because actually Charlie's going to France tomorrow for the rugby. Uh, so I've got tomorrow to myself, although I've made so many plans I'm not gonna be by myself. But yeah, perfect weekend. Mm. Yummy. added in some chocolate cosmos and some penstemon into these little displays that are going to go into the house. Um, chocolate cosmos I think might survive the frost. Not 100% sure that we're going to have one but it's actually, you know what, you really appreciate things like this in the house but I always think when you look at the herbaceous border you don't miss just one or two penstemon or a few chocolate cosmos so it's always worth doing these little displays but these penstemon I don't think would survive a frost so definitely worth taking that risk and bringing them inside to enjoy the blooms just that little bit longer wouldn't you agree senor snoodalot thank you for all of your assistance today i could not have done any of these tasks without my elongated friend well that's a nice little addition of color in the living room if you wonder ever why our sofa looks so scruffy it's because the dogs just use these cushions as their little beds I feel like Dickens might model that for you later. We've also got a very fun new bit of art up in here. This was a landscape, um, but we decided to switch it for this colorful cow. It's just a little bit of fun. I think it's actually a bit wonky. We need to straighten that. Yeah, a little bit of fun, love the color, and this is a local artist. So yeah, looks really nice. This is the dried hydrangea I was talking about. I need to put, put a few more in there. Uh, and then this display, this is the art that we replaced with the cow. Not sure where that one's gonna go now. Yeah, this one's dried out really nicely too. The hydrangea, the wildflower, little tufts, and then I've added in the color here with the dahlias. Now, I'm finally going to do my spiced pumpkin butter. This is my apple cider. It smells incredible, so lovely and autumnal. And I need my puree, I need a little bit of this, strained of course, some maple syrup um, and a few other ingredients to finish off my pumpkin butter. So the pumpkin butter recipe that I'm gonna be following is the one from 
half-baked harvest. I just love all of her recipes at this time of year and her photography is absolutely gorgeous. This is hopefully what it's gonna look like, but I'm going to be making mine in the Thermomix, unsurprisingly. Don't know what I would do without my Thermomix. So what I've actually done is I've gone onto Google and typed in Thermomix apple, you know, pumpkin butter recipe, just so that I know the right settings, but I'm going to use Tegan's Half-Baked Harvest's ingredients. The great thing about making my own apple cider is that I've got enough left to enjoy as a little beverage. I did put a cinnamon stick in there for um, visual purposes, but here's a nice little treat that I get to enjoy as a result of my efforts this afternoon. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. So the first ingredient is the pumpkin puree. Tegan uses 15 ounces, which is about 420 grams, which I think will be quite a lot of this. So that's our first ingredient. Next is 42 grams of our homemade apple cider. 60 grams of maple syrup. A tablespoon of vanilla extract. One tablespoon of pumpkin pie spice. A teaspoon of ground cinnamon. And half a teaspoon of salt. So you can add all of those ingredients into a pan on the hob and just slow, slowly stir for about 20 minutes, but I'm gonna let the Thermomix do the hard work and I'm going to add it to speed one, 200 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes. Well, I can't believe that we are finally at the point where I'm actually making the thing that I wanted to make. So what was our process? We started off by making the pumpkin puree at like nine o'clock this morning. Then we made, we started making the pumpkin butter and realized we needed to make apple cider. So that was our second creation of the day. Finally, we now have the pumpkin butter. There is about three jars worth, which is quite a good amount. And I feel like this would also be a really nice, very wholesome gift to take someone. Um, it smells amazing. I should probably leave the lid off while it's still hot, but it's just like a creamy, pumpkin-y, spiced, maple-y yumminess. And now we're going to make the fourth creation of the day. Finally, <laughs> finally, finally, the thing that I actually wanted to make, which is the pumpkin and chocolate chip loaf. This is again a half-baked harvest recipe, so I'll leave it linked down below. Um, and the ingredients are pumpkin butter, pumpkin puree, luckily I have got enough of that left, uh, salted butter, maple syrup, two large eggs, vanilla extract, flour, baking powder, baking soda, ground cinnamon, ground nutmeg, ground ginger, ground cloves, salt, chocolate chips, and sugar. I feel like I've shown you so much cooking um, that I'm not going to talk through this because you can just go to Tegan's website if you want to um, create this at home. So I'm just going to whiz through doing it, pop you on a little time lapse. I was watching Emily Cannon's vlog this morning and she said that time lapses are very 20, <laughs> she didn't give a year, but she was like, it's very old school to do time lapses. I love a good time lapse. So um, let's do one now. doing here is I've got half of the loaf mixture in here which is the pumpkin-y, maple-y, yummy mixture with chocolate chips stirred in. This is a mixture of granulated sugar and ground cinnamon, basically cinnamon sugar, and I've just sprinkled a load of that over the top of this half of the batter. Now I'm adding the second half of the batter and then I will sprinkle the rest of the cinnamon sugar on top of this. Now I'm going to swirl the knife through the cake and that's going to just swirl around the sugar to give it that cinnamon swirl effect. And let me tell you, this 
this is tasting delicious. Alexa, set timer for 30 minutes. So the pumpkin loaf is in the Arga and I'm taking my third <laughs> mug of the hot apple cider into the greenhouse and we're going to do probably my final planting of the year. This is obviously for the ranunculus and anemone that will bloom next year and they're going to live in here in my Victorian greenhouse so they don't get too warm. I may, might um, come and grab those seed trays but first of all before we get too excited I just need to check that I've got enough compost. I've kept the door shut so that the warmth from the sun today stays nice in here. Oh, can I do this while holding the apple cider? Yes, fabulous. Here's my little station. great job done. I've done, how many is that? 4, 8, 12, 16, 21, 16, is that right? 1, 4 is 4, 2, 4 is 8, 3, 4 is 12, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Oh my goodness, my math's diabolical and there's Charlie and I talking about what we should be learning in school. Anyway, 20 anemones here in the little terracotta pots in the greenhouse and the extra ones thrown in there for good measure. These are the ones that I'm saving for next time. And then in my little Victorian greenhouse, now I've already forgotten which ones are ranunculus and which ones are anemones. Oh dear. Oh, thank you, Josie. I have no idea. I'm just gonna have to label these as ranunculus and an enemy, and it'll be a surprise. The pumpkin and chocolate chip loaf is out of the oven. It was in for 55 minutes in total. Again, it's not risen a mega amount, but it has, the um, knife comes out clean and we do seem to have a gorgeous texture. I'm gonna give it a try. Oh my goodness. That is sensational. I actually wanna eat that entire thing now. That is so delicious. I think the ground ginger in there just gives it such a nice spiciness. Probably add a little bit more baking powder next time. This is the pumpkin puree that we've got left and Charlie really, really wants to do a steak and mac and cheese tonight. So I'm gonna turn it into my pumpkin mac and cheese. So I need to re-watch my vlog from last week to remind myself exactly how I did it because that was absolutely incredible.
Good morning, my darlings. Another fresh-faced, oh, sorry, Dixie. Another fresh-faced um, walk this morning, and it's actually pretty darn chilly today. I'm quite glad that I did what I did in the greenhouse yesterday. Um, but yeah, it feels like a real autumnal morning. So much so that I almost feel like I want to be wearing a woolly hat right now. I've got my hands tucked into my sleeves because it's ooh, just a little bit nippy. <laughs> Boys are having a great time. I'm now home alone. Charlie left at about 3 a.m. this morning. But I've got a really nice day planned, so sorry, I'm dazzled if I look at you. <laughs> Heading to Soho Farmhouse this morning after this lovely walk. I'll be going makeup free because I've got a facial. Gosh, Dickie knows where he's going. Bunny, wait for your mother. And then I'm going to have brunch there. And then I've got a classical piano, like sound healing event that I'm gonna head to with Hannah, which is gonna be gorgeous. And then dinner with Petra. So, oh, my face hasn't woken up yet this morning. You know, and it's cold and you're puffy. <laughs> so I'll show you this view instead. <laughs> Dexy trying to manoeuvre the stump. Chicken Lynn is halfway across the field. You having a nice time, bunnies? Oh, mummy, we, we love morning walks, mummy. quick breakfast, a coffee with hazelnut milk, because I've run out of oat milk tragically, and some of my delicious banana bread warmed up on the Arga. Mm, yummy! Did I say banana bread again? <laughs> Pumpkin bread! gorgeous start to the day after my lovely walk and then beautiful scenic drive down to the farmhouse it's not just um it's not just me that thinks it's scenic it is actually dedicated as i think it's called a, a nature drive or literally a scenic drive from our house to the farm it is beautiful and then i had a 45 minute face gym treatment funny because i was literally saying in the field that my face felt very puffy this morning now i feel the opposite she did half of my face using various massage techniques and you know when they really like pummel the face using almost like a little exercise ball to hoik my skin up uh, to activate the muscles she did one side and not the other and showed me the mirror and honestly this cheekbone looked like a whole inch higher than the other i definitely want to be coming and doing that more regularly it was absolutely gorgeous, snuggled up in the Soho home robe. You are kind of in the middle of the waiting area, but um, I asked about that. I was like, do some people not like this, being out in the middle of this area? You can hear other people chatting. And she was like, no, that's part of the theatre of Face Gym. So, very nice treatment. Just had a nice brunch in the sunshine with Lala. Ooh, what's my hair doing? Something completely bonkers. Um, and now we're just having a little walk around. Lala is investigating the nasturtiums and I've just spotted, I've brought you to this little area before, which is my favorite. This is um, the pizza oven area, but also I've just noticed that they have got these two, I think this is the, is it Guy Ritchie, the outdoor kitchen um, company, which makes me think they're going to start doing some kind of outdoor cooking 
either events or classes here. So definitely need to keep an eye out for that because that would be right up my street. that facial feels really good as well so yes as I said I'm definitely gonna be booking into them more regularly I've just properly read about the experience that Hannah and I are heading to later so the lady that invited me Christina she is actually a classical pianist and she's going to be playing piano during this experience but let me read you the whole thing so it's at Astor Manor which is near Burford about a 40 minute beautiful drive from here Cellist and yoga teacher Naomi will guide you through gentle and mindful movements to do from your mattress. You basically have these like little mattresses on the floor with blankets, which is where you lie down and listen, <laughs> hence the name of the program. Tibetan Bowles and Naomi Watts playing live cello, including solo Bach and ethereal, ethereal, is it ethereal or ethereal? duos with the piano. The session will leave you feeling as if every cell in your body has been awakened, a real sense of being uplifted by Bach and Tibetan bowls. You'll have warm cacao on arrival and be, you'll be lying down on the most soft sumptuous bed with blankets, cushions and everything provided for your utter comfort and relaxation. Heavenly! How heavenly! I can't wait. I love doing things which are a little bit different like that. But I've got about an hour until I need to go quite full after my beans on toast at the farmhouse and it's just it's just the most glorious day literally the perfect autumn day I've got a bug hanging from my sleeve can you see that it's also Dickie's favorite kind of day my little sunbathing saucisson oh you're so fluffy are you going to show me the tummy are you going are you going to show your mummy the tummy oh mummy is so lucky to get to see the elusive sausage tomb Sausage tomb. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, I'm so lucky to get to see the sausage tomb on the floofiest sausage in the whole land. Oh, mummy, I really, really like that, mummy. I really like the way you stroke and scratch the sausage tomb. My ridiculous children.
again my darlings I'm just literally literally through the door and um, I'm speaking to you guys before even taking off my gilet wow that that's how close we are how lovely so um, the original plan was to go for dinner with Petra tonight um, at a pub but actually George has surprised her with a date night <laughs> which is great but also men never listen she told him we had plans tonight anyway I have therefore picked up Indian takeaway for two for one for me takeaway for two I'm eating it all by myself because I am peckish um oh my battery's flashing but wowza that was just the loveliest afternoon Christina is the most talented and beautiful pianist I did try to capture a little bit and the Astor Astor Manor is the most beautiful home it's a private home and they host a couple of events there throughout the year and Christina's lie down and listen sessions she does them all over the country so I think it's at lie down and listen on Instagram I would so highly recommend if you like sound healing if you love classical music it was a real good energy kind of afternoon and Hannah really enjoyed it as well it was a two-hour session on these very comfortable beds started off with some breathing some meditation some Tibetan bowls and then about an hour of beautiful piano music and you're just cozy on these lovely little beds my perfect afternoon so now I'm gonna stick my Indian <laughs> takeaway for two in the Aga and I am gonna watch a shed load of Succession. I've, I don't think I've ever had a night by myself in this house. Have I? I don't think I have. Don't think I ever have. So my first ever sleepover. Um, the boys are with Lola, but she's gonna send them back over now. So darlings, I'm gonna end the vlog here because I'm just gonna slob out. I can't wait, I'm so excited. Charlie should, Charlie should leave me more often. <laughs> But um, yeah, I really hope you guys have enjoyed the vlog. So I'm just taking my boots off, getting comfortable. I feel like it's been quite a cosy, homely, autumnal one. Um, but as always, thank you so much for watching, darlings, and I will see you in the next one. Good night. <laughs>